Hello, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that wants to know, do you really not remember... Was it something that he said? All those voices in your head. Call it Gloria! Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look back at one of our favorite games uh, that we played. It was our very first review on the Discriminating Gamer, Twilight Struggle. With me, as always, is my friend and co-host, Zach. Zach and I are going to go ahead and take a look back. Uh, a few things we do need to know going forward. First of all, uh, we're in my car, and it's uh, kind of cold, so we're hoping it uh, heats up here. In fact, I'll turn the heat on. Uh, but just so you know, if we get uh, uh, cold, we might go back inside. But uh, just thought I'd throw that out there. Now, also, too, Zach, for Christmas, bought me the really cool souped-up um, you know, plastic tiles for the the Twilight Struggle instead of the Chits, so we just played the game again. Now, this is the first time I played it in about two years, I think. Zach's played it a few times with his son since. I played it a few days ago where my son beat me in two rounds. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it's a game I've played a lot. I just haven't played a lot lately. Uh, I think, Zach, you probably play this game a lot more than I have in the last few years. Yeah, like, maybe, maybe. <clears throat> but, um, so, let's just let's just uh, go back. Um, like I say, we, this is the first game we reviewed in uh, 2014. The very first game on the Discriminating Gamer. Now, I bought this game, uh, and I played it for the very first time with Sean, your brother. Mm -hmm. We instantly fell in love with it. I couldn't wait for you to play it, and it wasn't too much longer that you and I sat down and played the game. Do you remember that first game we played? I think so. I think I won as the U.S. I can't remember. That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> I totally get it. I, <laughs> I think that's what happened. I, I think that's what happened. I remember the game with Sean. Actually, I played a few games with Sean, so they all kind of yeah. bleed together now. But but no, I remember. Uh, so we played that game, and then but but you instantly fell in love with it too, oh, though. Yeah. I remember you just could not shut up about that game. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, what in your opinion, is the best mechanic, the best thing that this game does so well? Oh, gosh. there's a, it's, so, it's so much to say. First of all, as you were saying, it's one of our favorite. This is maybe my favorite. No, this is my favorite game of all time. Oh, good. Good this for you. This is my all-time favorite game. Not only my favorite two-player, but my favorite <clears throat> game of all time. So I want to throw that out there. I like, um, I mean, there's so much. I mean, the card aspect. I mean, really, the history of it. You learn while playing this game. Yeah, I yeah. mean, not you, because you know everything about this here anyway. But us you know, non-PhD you, schmoes, you know, we learn quite a bit. You know what, though? I still get stuff out of this game. Oh, I'm you still do. picking up stuff yeah. in this game, for sure, for sure. So there's that, but uh, it's uh, just the whole idea that you you, you got to... Well, in the game we played today, I mean, we're probably going to get more detail of that, which I, I won as the Soviets. <laughs> um, I enjoyed... Uh, misdirection. I was trying to, to fill out Africa more to get you to spend resources that I could use in other places yeah. and that you weren't using. So there's a lot of that. There's a lot of, uh, like you said, misdirection, how you're going to play the countries. Bluff. There's a bluff, lot of bluff. Lot of bluff double bluff. And... Which, you know, seems very uh, fair and accurate to the, uh, to the Cold War era that we're talking about. Uh, but no, like I say, I like the cards. I like the, 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 <coughs> the getting power... Um, you know, the excitement when you think, oh my gosh, I got that scoring card, and I'm going to, oh, no, it didn't work out like I thought. Yeah, it's just, yeah. No, it's, it's hard to pin it down to one thing. Because it is. Because it's just, it's a lot of yummy tasting things thrown into a salad, and then it tastes even better. For me, and I think you're, I agree, agree with you on all those points, for me, I think the thing I love most about Twilight Struggle is the fact that it's a game that I, I don't know of any other game that does it as well where it makes it forces you to make the best of bad decisions every round. You're yeah. constantly saying, "Well, I can do this, but there's a price I'm going to pay. Do I want to pay that price or do I want to pay this other price?" And I just the, no other game does that like this game does. No, you get a handful of your opponent's <coughs> cards, a whole oh. and that's okay, well, I got to play this, but which one's the which one do you hold on for for Three or four rounds. So which one do you trash for the space race? Which one? Which, what's the least of, of all these bad decisions? You know? No, absolutely. It's it's it is. It's that moment when you get your hand and you see your opponent's uh, color on it, and you just you just wilt. You're just like, oh gosh. And then conversely, there are those few times when you get a hand that's just like practically mostly yours, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna dominate <laughs> this round. You know? Um, 
But, and you know, it's funny too, because when you get those cards that are your um, color, mm -hmm. and then you've got that choice of, well, I can still play it for the operation points, but do I want to play it for the event? Is the event worth it? Do I need that more, or do I need operations? Because there are times when I'm burning an event that would otherwise would be freaking awesome, but I just need those OP because i got to play it somewhere else, you mm -hmm. know? No, absolutely. I mean, you can tell it's a credit <laughs> to the design of the game. I could see them playing and thinking, well, the way we got the game right now, they're just going to do the operation points, operation points, operation points. What can we do to make other things more enticing? Right, and you right, you got the right. space race, and you got the coups and the realignments, and then you got all these other things. I know, and, and it's, and it's, it is. It's just this beautiful, beautiful melange, mm -hmm. uh, tapestry of, of just uh, ideas here. And it's, and it's just solid from beginning to end. I remember um, I played a game once where I forgot... About the, the DEFCON level was at two, and I started a nuclear war and lost the game. <laughs> and it was the stupidest thing. Yeah, it was the stupidest thing that I shouldn't have have let slip past me, but I did, and I paid the price for it. But my favorite, I think, my favorite moment I ever had playing this game, out of many, because this yeah. is a game. Th there's always favorite moments. My favorite moment was that time I was telling you about once where I was playing with Sean, and I had the card, and I can't remember the name of the card, but it's the one in Late War where if DEFCON's like at two, you can play that, you you instantly have to give your opponent so many points, but then you end the game and win. And I had like seven points, I think it was like seven points, I think the card gave him like five points, so I get down to two and I instantly won it. And Sean lost, and he was so mad, and I don't think he was mad that he lost so much as he was mad that he had a strategy and a plan all <laughs> worked out and I just threw a monkey wrench in it and a, he hated that a plan that he had been laying out for probably the last five rounds yeah and yeah. just moving towards it and then it just that and was it me that whole round was working toward that card just yeah. maneuvering getting everything I had I low was low I intentionally did things to lower the defcon it was just wild so let me ask you what what if, if, if you have a favorite moment in this game can you you know what? It's one where I lost. It was, uh, I was playing with my son, and <laughs> everything I thought was going great, and I neglected Europe, and um, all of a sudden, Max played down the Europe scoring card and said, I won. I said, what are you talking about? I said, well, look what it says right here. It says, if you control Europe, you <laughs> automatically win. And I counted everything eight times, and sure enough, he had <laughs> control. He positioned control of every country. I was so mad, yeah, because that one little <laughs> tidbit escaped me, and that taught me. Although he did beat me by with uh, controlling Europe another time, but it still taught me that you can't neglect any part of the game. Well, you know, and it was funny too because today you were you were you were making pretty damn aggressive in in Europe, yeah, and and you nearly got it, but I was able to the last mm -hmm. minute. I was thinking, oh crap, I'm going to lose Europe. So. Yeah, so we we're able to get that taken care of, but. Now, and I'll tell you something I really like about this game. It's a, uh, it would I'd classify it as more a complex complex game, but I think it's a good gateway game for somebody who wants to venture into more complex games. Yes, it's 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 one of the least complex complex games there is. Absolutely, you know, yeah. and I agree. And you know, the thing the, the thing that idea of complexity is such a relative term, but but I would agree. I mean, I I would call this. I mean, this is not a game you you play with your mom. No, you know, no. this is not a game you you. You'd, you'd play with an elderly uncle or something like that and, unless they were, you know, into gaming. It's got to be someone really into gaming. But, That's just uh, it. It's, yeah. it's, it's a gamer's game. Yeah. It's a oh, gamer's really game. really is. Yeah. I, 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 but, you know, again, it's a game that every time you play it, you have fun, you have a smile on your face even when you lose. Yeah, there's so many ways to win and lose this game. Oh, I know. So I know. Many. There's there's so much you got to keep keep, keep, keep keep on the on your eye. You know, speaking to getting back to the idea of theme that you were talking about, just the Cold War and how you're learning stuff. You know, I talked to uh, uh, Jason Matthews, one of the designers, a few years ago. I was talking to him, and and he said that we were, um, uh, you know, just chatting over Facebook or something. But he was telling me that, uh, you know, for him in, in creating a historical game and creating this historical game, you know, the, and I was talking about game design and, and putting historical theme in there. And he was telling me, he says, you know, you got to put the game first. History is a good, you know, theme, and you need it, and it's important. He says, but but the game's got to come first, you know. And I and I really agree with that. You know, um, I, I I mentioned this. I was talking to Dan Picaldi the other day on his show a few months back, and and I brought up uh, in War Room, like Libya 
is like an, an oil producer for the Axis. But in reality, they didn't discover oil until like the late 50s, right? So sometimes you gotta fudge, I think, the history to make the game work. And uh, I took a lot of flack for that when I was on Dan's show. A lot of people thought, no, no, it's, it's, it's all about the history. It's like, no, it's gotta be about the game. And, but boy, I'll tell you, this game does history, I think just about better than any game there is. Well, know? if what you say is true, then this game is lightning in a bottle because it, it, it does the game, the attention to the game, but I can't imagine it capturing the history more perfect. I don't think there, it doesn't feel like there's any fudging, like what you were saying about Libya. It doesn't feel like there's any fudging in this one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah it feels it, pretty, pretty uh, accurate to the era of what you're in. What a fascinating one, too. It's great. It's great. And I've got, you know, so uh, they came out with uh, Imperial Struggle earlier this year, which I played, which at some point we'll have to hit. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. Uh, and Imperial Struggle, I like. I think Imperial Struggle is a very good game. I don't think it's a great game. Twilight Struggle is a great game. And in fact, I think Twilight Struggle, for, for gamers, is a standard. It's, it's, it's one of those games you compare everything else with. Now, i got to tell you, for me, it's always, it's always this match between this and Star Wars Rebellion. And and because I love Star Wars Rebellion, I, mean, I think they're both two great two-player games. Don't ever play the four-player Star Wars Rebellion; it's not nearly as much fun. But the two-player Rebellion and Twilight Struggle for me, it's a juggling match. And gun to my head, you know, I I, I think I got to give TS the edge, um, mm -hmm. just because as much as I love Star Wars, I, I love the history of this game, and I love that I learn when I play this game. And again making the best of those bad decisions. No, that Star Wars game you're talking about is a great. It's a fantastic game. It's a lot of fun. It's very different than any other game I've ever played. Yeah. But I don't know what it is about Twilight Struggle. Not only my favorite two player, but oh my gosh. Well, it's it's you know, I I got to tell you too, if I were to make a list of games that stress me out, this one would be near the top. I think I think the worst would probably be Letters from Whitechapel if I was playing Jack the Ripper. That game stresses me out. But this game would be right up near the top because it is because you've got you've got a you've got a scoring card for say Europe, mm -hmm. and you've got and you've got the um, the OP to position yourself perfectly. But you know, as soon as you start laying down your 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 operational points in Europe, the other guy's going to see what you're doing. He's going to lay down stuff. He's going to really suspect you've got the the Europe card. Mm -hmm. So by the time you play it, you know, are you going to get it? And you're just hoping right. he's he's paying too much paying too much attention to what he's doing, or you thinking you're playing misdirection, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or are you going to do the thing where they're like, oh, maybe I will get the uh, midi scoring card, so I'll build here. And, yeah, yeah. And then you never get it, and then you lose. I had that great coup. Uh, in uh, Algeria, in this game. Oh, you did. Where I rolled. I. I, I mean, I. It was. It was a two, and I rolled the six, and I had the. And I had the boost from the card, and yeah. so I. I was able to completely get rid of your guys and put my guys in there, and <laughs> it was. It was. That was a beautiful coup. A beautiful, beautiful coup. Oh, yeah. it, has anybody ever said that before? A beautiful, beautiful coup. A what beautiful was, what was that in Simpsons? It's a bloodless coup. All smotherings. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that line. Yeah. Oh god. But anyway, uh, Twilight Struggle is, you know, no no question, an amazing game. It's one of our hands down favorites. The gold standard. The gold standard. Any, anything else you want to say about Twilight Struggle? I just love this game, and thanks for playing with me. And I'm excited uh, that you like the. Uh, yeah. These. The, these. The, the do you remember? Gosh, I, do, you, do you remember the name of the company? Um, I got. Oh, I got that. Yeah, yeah. I got it off the uh, board game geek. Was it from board game? Geek? Well, board I didn't, game I, geek store. Yeah. Is it the, okay? I don't know if board game geek did it or. or I, I'm, I'm not sure did who it or, did it, but that's where I got yeah, it. Yeah, the off the board game because that's where I first saw the yeah. saw the link. So I don't know who did it after that. Yeah, but they're beautiful. I'll, I'll put put some pictures here in the video so you can take a look at them. They're fun yeah. to play with because they don't slide around like the cardboard yeah. counters. Great investment if you love this game. Oh and, yeah, and uh, I, I certainly love this game. And so yeah. thank you very much. No, you're very welcome. And what did I get you for Christmas? Oh, you got me a chance. Chancellorsville. Chancellorsville, eighteen sixty three from Worthington yeah. Games. We played that a while ago, and he loved it. So. Yeah, that might be my. It's probably my favorite uh, new game of twenty twenty. Excellent, excellent. The more excellent. I think about it. All right, friends. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to go ahead and uh, sign off for the evening. Uh, check us out. Please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, all that good stuff. Leave a comment uh, when you see this video. Let us know what do you think about Twilight Struggle. What do you think about uh, these replay videos? Do you want to see us do more of these where we just talk about some of our old favorite games we previously reviewed? But I think I'm safe in saying our Buy It recommendation still stands. Um, so thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on The Discriminating Gamer. Uh, you know, speaking of Laura Brannigan, ladies and gentlemen, I was just thinking about all the great hits she had back in the day. Gloria. 
Well, well, Gloria. Well, there was, there was, yeah, there was, yeah, there was Gloria. Yeah. Don't forget Gloria. 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 Please somebody help me. I'm on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me. I'm on the solid ground. It's a long time, and I'll be dying. Once a year, I wind up in the band. Oh, there's a game. Oh, what you play it for? It's for having fun and learning about the Cold War. Your mind, like a mental pack of sharks, will be putting people in their place like Karl Marx. Spreading influence across the globe in one of the best stories ever told. Twilight Struggle, play it on the double. Communist troubles in Twilight Struggle. Snuggle, but I'd rather go and play Twilight Struggle. Uh, 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 oh.